Hey everyone, it's Frankie Lou and Angus and we're here today on this very kind of very rainy day to discuss composting with you because we can't really quite get in the garden and do some real gardening today but we can talk about our compost and I've got the compost open today to get a little bit of moisture because uh, I do want to make sure it's moist. Now a lot of people seem to be afraid of compost. They think it's really di difficult and uh, I've been waiting to say this all day. It's not rocket science. It's rotting science. Right? Because if you think about Why it, did you make me say compost, is, uh, <laughs> compost is really a very natural process. Everything on this planet that is organic will eventually rot except for... Styrofoam. No, organic material. It's the only organic thing that doesn't rot. Honey. Honey. Yeah, honey is the only thing and it's kind of a magical substance that doesn't really rot. Everything else... Yep, that's... they've even found honey in King Tutankhamun's grave that was still edible. Yeah, so let's try to... Yeah, so apart from that, eventually everything else on this planet that was living once will become soil again, okay? So really, when you're composting, you're just helping that process along, okay? And there's a couple things that you can do to to make it go a little faster and here in alberta in the zone three that we're in we have to do a few tricks to make it go fast enough um, there's parts of the world where you can whip get compost done super super fast but here i've had to take a few little tricks from different types of composting so that i can get two good batches of compost a year now this is the messiest part of our garden because it is the compost but um, it's kind of important that you can see the difference as to what happens when we're composting. We have a three, three um, stage. stage area. Angus built this with me seven years ago when we first moved out here. So here's stage one. Yes, we just throw out every organic thing. Yeah. In including plant matter. Yeah. Eggshells and coffee grounds. Yeah, everything goes in there. Stuff from the garden. Yep. Soil. Yeah, soil um, from old pots. Uh, um, chicken the, coop stuff. Ch roast yeah. chicken coop stuff. Yeah. Chicken it's, poop. Yeah, it's a good mix of greens and browns, okay? Because that's what you want to do. You greens, don't, browns, and poop. <laughs> you don't want to put only greens or only browns. You want to have a mix. Yeah, so other greens would be like stuff that is wet. And browns would be like dry grass. Yeah, I know. A lot of people get it really complex about it, but it really doesn't have to be. Angus is right. If it's dry and brown, it's probably a brown. And if it's not and it looks green and wet, it's a green. Okay, so there you go. Not rocket science, like I said. Then once we have this pile fill, we move it into this second pile. And as you can see, it's almost half the size by the time it goes from one to the other pile. Yeah. So, and, this is full, we put it in the room. and then we do a third pile of it mellowing. But this I am called mellowing. Yeah. And that's um, when you let, let it sit for like five months. No, <laughs> you let it sit for a month or so. It's to just keep, like let it fully compost, make sure that the pH is neutral. That's right, because there's a whole bunch of processes that are going on inside your compost heap to get it working. So in this second pile, this that's where most of the composting work goes on. So what we do is once that pile is, is the big pile is full there, we, we shift everything along, okay? So that's about the same time as the mellow pile is ready to go. And that goes straight onto our garden beds. And I'll get to do that in about a week's time. And then again at the end of the summer, okay? Yep. So you turn it frequently, like every week or so? Yeah. This middle pile here, it gets, turned more. it gets turned a lot. But I also, I do sort of kind of a mix of both hot composting and cold composting. Um, it's a big pile. What I do is I use an old truck deck cover because it's nice and thick and black. You can use a black tarp or black plastic. And I put, yeah, you want it to be dark so it absorbs the sunlight. Yeah, you want it to get some of that sunlight in there and you kind of want to trap it to almost create an anaerobic if it is faster, but at the same time, if you leave it completely anaerobic, what can happen, Angus, if you never turn a big pile over? It will get very uneven and acidic. Acidic, and also what happens in um, at the garbage dump? Oh, it doesn't decompose. Yeah, um, if you leave something completely sealed, 
it doesn't decompose um, yeah. that you kind of do not not quickly enough anyways for humans to use it. So I kind of use a mix of the two. I throw the second pile in there and I turn it every few days or so. It is warmer. It actually does generate heat because I do have this black yep. tarp on it. And methane gas. We should probably do some burn <laughs> and, uh And then I also want to let it open every once in a while. And I do water my compost because you want to encourage the bacteria and the fungi that are your best friends when it comes to composting to be doing their jobs. So there's a few things that I do to assist with that. I throw dirt on, on both the first and the second stage of my composting. Yes, that's why if you see those little white dots, that's vermiculite from the potting soil. Yeah, vermiculite from potting soil. Cause you know, once you've used say your annual baskets, they really are heavy feeders and you're not really gonna wanna use that until it's been enriched again. Throw it in the compost um, and then it just becomes great soil again. And what we do is once I have moved it into the second batch, I don't add any more organic matter to it. Now I want it to go down. It's gonna go down to less than half the size of what it was originally. And that's good. That's what you want it to do. If you think your compost is done and it's still three quarters the size that it originally was, it isn't. And one of the ways you can ensure that it is evenly getting decomposed is by turning it quite frequently. And uh, Angus sees me out here doing that all the time. I enjoy it, I try to do it every few days. And another thing I do is I water it because I wanna encourage the um, bacteria and the fungi to survive. Yep, and right now that it's raining, we take the tarp off. That's right, right? I don't have to, to water it because I've got the tarp off so that it'll, it'll, be, uh, it'll get nice and warm and Mo well, moist, okay? In BC, you probably don't have to water your compost, but here in Alberta, I do have to water it. Once, if, if it's not moist, I do put water on it. And then this last stage here, um, mellowing. basically it's just my mellowing stage. Um, by the time that this is down to half, it's probably ready to go in the garden, but I don't want there to be High pH, or low pH. High or low pH, exactly. So in here, it has an opportunity to sort of make sure that it's fully composted, mellowed. And one of the ways that I know that is 100% mellowed is um, I'll get volunteers growing in this side, uh, which is where there's some seeds that have fallen in there and they will grow and sprout and they look green. They don't look yellow. Yellow leaves is an indication that your, your compost is still got either too high or too low um, pH levels. It tends to be acidic at the start, then become alkaline and kind of shift around a lot. So this mellowing stage is kind of pretty important we find here. All right, so please do, do give it a try. Not, I know not everybody. Don't do it like inside. <laughs> Unless you have worms. You can do vermiculture. Maybe we'll talk about yes, that another time. Don't do this kind of composting inside because your house will explode. <laughs> well, it does produce glass, um, gas, yeah, but messy. one thing is the way that I know that this compost pile is ready. Oh, this is so you lovely. It. it actually smells good, okay? It smells sweet. Yeah. And Angus, did that compost smell good when you first started bringing it out there and putting well, it in our... Cause, okay, we have like this small little compost bin inside that we put our greens in. And it's and Angus's eggshells. job to bring it out. And I have out. to do this. And bring it out. But now, put your nose in this. <laughs> no, it smells good, doesn't it? Okay, it smells better than the original. Yeah, one. it smells good. And see, it's so lush and perfect. And, and this is going to be... It shouldn't be clumping. It's going to be wonderful food for my garden our garden okay so please do give composting a try um like compost it's not hard okay you're just encouraging nature to do its thing um it's rotting science not rocket science that's my new phrase <laughs> okay have a great day please do leave us a comment if you want some suggestions on what want to make some suggestions about videos that we can make in the future yep. or if you have any questions we'd be happy to answer it yep and uh, have a great day and get your hands dirty out there. Yes.